And now, time for another thrilling edition of Adventures in Radio Land. This segment, Hasty Decisions Part 4, The Video Truck. To begin with, this Hasty Decisions series is all about the negative aspects of hasty decisions. For years, I was the tech go-to guy for my good friend, journalist, and biographer, Alana Nash, and all of her broadcast endeavors through the years, of which there were many. It was always a pleasure working with Alana. We shared many projects. She as producer, and I as audio editor, studio recorder, and mixer. Uh, and more about Alana later. It was 2 a.m. Friday the 13th, 1982. We were returning uh, from a video shoot down in Florida in our remote video truck. Our video truck was a recently remodeled Gersten Slager bookmobile. Well, during the last two hours, a heavy fog had moved in, mixing with the dark of night. I had thought about calling it a night and pulling off somewhere, but I had a studio production schedule with Alana in the morning, so the pressure was on to get back home for her scheduled session. I was not looking forward to having to call her and say I wasn't going to be able to make it. I could have done that. We were good friends. Alana would have uh, understood, but uh, we worked together so well. I gave 150%, and she gave 150%, and together we got things done. She had been very successful with all of her productions, except for one involving Muhammad Ali. And that was due mostly with the declining health of Ali. But just imagine having Muhammad Ali and his buddy and sparring partner Jimmy Ellis in your studio at the same time, with Ali doing all of his magic tricks during breaks between recording sessions. But I digress, because at this time the thought of it being Friday the 13th crossed my mind, but was dismissed. This hasty decision uh, meant to drive on. Visibility was now 20 feet at best. I was trying not to overcome my uh, headlights when suddenly a semi-trailer truck doing 65 miles an hour tore into our rather uh, rear end control room. I was snapped back in the driver's seat. Our speed increased dramatically. I was now standing up on the brake pedal. The impact turned us over. As we left the highway and slid towards some trees, I was thrown through the windshield, hitting the middle divider with my right shoulder, breaking my collarbone. Then I was tumbling through the air in front of the truck. I remembered my old football coach teaching me how to take a fall, how to get small and tumble like a ball. So I became the smallest ball I could and tried to roll faster than the truck was sliding behind me and hoping not to hit a tree. When I came to, the truck lay on its side, the front end smashed by a tree. When I got to the truck, everything was turned around. There was debris everywhere and a ticking sound coming from somewhere in the wreckage. What could still be operating in all this mess? But then who cares? Where's Teresa, my wife? Where could she be in all this hell? Then I realized that that ticking sound was. It was the electric fuel pump going mad. The front end tree crash had destroyed the motor, and now this crazy fuel pump was trying to keep the fuel line gas pressure up, and uh, it was just pouring raw gasoline all over the hot engine block. Please, Lord, let me find Teresa and get out of here. It was then I found her arm. I moved some debris away to get to her body. She was lifeless, dead or alive. That was the question. I felt for a pulse, alive. I tried to lift her up, but my broken shoulder made it a struggle. After a time, we finally made it out through the destroyed rear window. Later, in the Lewisburg, Tennessee Hospital Emergency Room, as we lay side by side on gurneys, I found her hand and held it tightly. It was then she spoke for the first time. She said, I love you, babe. Don't worry about anything else. She knew the Lord had spared us the two most important things, our lives. I tell this story just as a way of showing how hasty decisions can impact our lives later on. I think hasty decisions should always be made on the cautious side of the coin. Hasty decisions can come back to bite you. This is especially true when operating or working on electronic equipment. Well, this has been another thrilling edition of Adventures in Radioland. This segment, the video truck. Well, 
there for consideration of becoming a, a less hasty decision person and more uh, cautious. Uh, that can uh, always be a, a good measure when you're working particularly on, on electronic gear. This is the Friday afternoon Kiss of Helignet. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. <laughs>